officially we want to welcome all of you and to our media members you are most welcome for this coverage. So please with a thunderous applause, let's put our hands together for the operations manager for after it. Margaret. Oh, let's put our hands together for Margaret. Margaret will be our MC for this morning into the afternoon for this program and she's going to steer the affairs for this afternoon. Margaret, over to you. Thank you, Kupo. Hello. Um, good morning. How are you all? Are you sure you are fine? How are you all? Afri Week is an acronym for African with change mentality and set up as for service to humanity. So we're saying that Africans, we need to have a change of mind and then having the desire to serve our nation or our continent, Africa. Because um, um, it seems like we are lacking behind when it comes to development. And so everybody, or especially we, the youth, I say we because I'm also a youth. I'm not an adult yet. I'm not an old person yet, so I'm so a youth. We always want to go to overseas for greener pastures. Whereas Africa Settle believes that we can, with a mindset, can make changes right here and make development happen. So that is Settle Africa for you. And so we believe in um, servant leadership. We don't believe in position, as in you need to have a position to do some work or come about development. So we believe that every one of us need to serve their nation, Ghana, West Africa, and Africa, or the whole world. So you don't really need to, excuse me to say, become a president of Ghana before you take up a, a service role. But wherever you are, even in your house, you are supposed to begin doing the work as an individual. Because we believe that everyone, each and every one of us, has some leadership uh, ability within us. But when we are able to go within us, we'll be able to find out what we can do to bring about change, even right at this age. And I can remember 20 years ago, I was in essence, right in secondary school. Um, I was the Pan-African Vice President, where I met my executive director, Nana Osei, who is a genius, going to the USA, currently. So I've been going to the Boys Center, where I meet a lot. So that's where I met my executive director. And I didn't really know today I would pass on the vision. So you see, I started doing something right from now I'm saying it's just the essay. And today I am doing what I have to do. I do it because not because of the position, the position just came. I wasn't even really expecting it. I'm doing it because I believe and need to give back to society. I believe I have something that I can impart in a soul that can bring about development. I don't believe in traveling overseas to make it because glass is greener and your feet. You might go there and see that things are not even the way you think. Because when you go there, you're not going to sleep, you're going to work hard to get whatever you want to get. So that is why we say that Africans, we need to have a change of mind and think within, I mean look within us and see if we can find things and do some big branding to move our continent forward. So that is what AfroWork is all about. Thank you. At this point, I want to acknowledge my executive director, Nana Osebo Nsujinia, for whose vision today I also have a part to play and stand here. And I have all the executive members here. We will call ourselves team, so we say set up Afri Week team, because we believe that each and every one in the company works together to make things happen. It's not just the operations manager, it's not, it's not just the public relations officer, but everybody plays a part. They do what they have to do for things to happen. Therefore, we call ourselves team. So I want to acknowledge our team this morning. I also want to acknowledge the assistant headmaster 
of Ghana, Mr. Frederick Ousu is here. Sir Frederick. Please, can you have a seat here for us? Thank you, Mr. Frederick. And I have all the Seto Africa team here. Our media men are here. I can see TV3, um, TV Africa, who else? Was, as they come, I will introduce them to you. So we appreciate you, TV Africa and TV3, for coming here. We have set up Afri Week Media also presenting. Thank you. Now, I want to introduce, we don't want to take too much of your time. I want to introduce you to our first speaker of the day because of time. We'll have time for you to ask questions. We're going to interact with each other. But we want the speakers to take the amount, the, 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 the podium, talk to us when they are done. Then we can go on with our interactions. So at this point, I want to invite, before I invite, when I say set up, you say Afri Week. Set up. Set up. Afri Week. Afri Week. Afri Week. Oh, you are awesome. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, thank you. So now I want to invite the first speaker. He doesn't want so much introduction, so he told me, Margaret, just mention my name. So I'm inviting Mr. Kojo Ewa from Paul, our public relations officer, as our first speaker. Thank you. What is success? When we say success, who can give me their definition of what success is. So, someone wants quit. The problem with success is that the formula is the same as the one for a nervous breakdown. Think about it. What is success? It is said that nothing succeeds like success, and rightly so. Over the years, there has been a myriad of definitions and interpretations given to the word success. So before we delve into what we see as Seto Afro Week, what we believe to be the meaning of success, let's go to the definition from the people who actually wrote the language. According to the Cambridge Learner's Dictionary, success is achieving the results wanted or hoped for. Dictionary.com defines success as the favorable or prosperous termination of attempts or endeavors, the accomplishment of one's goals, the attainment of wealth, position, honors, fame, and the like, a performance or achievement that is marked by success as by the attainment of honor. Yet again, if you go to businessdictionary.com, it defines the concept of success as completing an objective or reaching a goal. Success can be expanded to encompass an entire project or an, it can be restricted to a single component of a project. What I'm trying to say is that depending on who you are and what you are doing, the concept of success can be defined by your own terms. Now, what we know, or the picture that comes to your mind, or what we call the colloquial understanding of the word success, deals with either fame, wealth, or other material benefits. Now, while I was researching the concept for this speech, I came across a very interesting definition. The accomplishment of an A or a purpose. Now, who can tell me what a purpose or aim is? Um, a person's purpose refers to that person's set goal or that person's aim. Person's set goal or Do you know what I'm going to ask you? Do you know what I'm going to ask you? Purpose. And that brings us to the trust of my speech. What is purpose? For us as Settle Africa, our paradigm of success is based on purpose. Okay? Let me give you a very simple explanation. If you take a walk down the street and ask people, 
what their definition of success is. You will come out with an array of definitions as diverse as the works of life of the people you meet. You see, I try to define success by going into the dictionary and finding synonyms for the word success. And you will be surprised. Uh, there are so many different words that can be used for the word success. One might say it's just semantics, but the idea of success has been shaped by the society that you live in, and this society is besotted with the concept that is hard to define, though it's simple, and we are brought down by expectations that is ever-changing, never standing at one point. So one man's idea of what success is might be different from your idea of what success is. You say that it is by what? Purpose is a set aim, something that you want to achieve. Very good. Now, let us digress a bit and take a cue from nature. Have you stopped to ask yourself if the flower exists? Huh? A flower, does it exist for itself? The beauty of the flower, does it ex exist for itself? The bird, do they sing for themselves or does a river flow just because it can or for itself? Everything that is created, and even if you don't believe in the concept of creation, mm, but you believe in the concept of evolution without intelligent design, everything exists for a purpose that it can fulfill. At conception, the mango seed is imbued with inherent characteristics, genetic blueprint for it to grow. Once it gets into an environment that is conducive, a mango tree will grow, it will first germinate, grow, into a tree and bring out fruits for other people. The fruits are not for itself. In our local language, we say that Okoto Engo Anma, a crab never gives birth to a bird. You plant a mango tree, you are going to what? See mango fruits. You are not going to see orange fruits. Okay. And so it is with each one of us. You were born to fulfill a purpose, and you are the only one uniquely gifted and programmed to fulfill that purpose. As far as I'm concerned, you are not successful until that purpose for, for which you were born has been duly fulfilled or achieved, irrespective of whatever you have achieved in other spheres of life. This is what I'm trying to say. Purpose is the bedrock of success. Everything that you do that you consider successful, it depends upon the purpose for which you are doing that something. Huh? Purpose is the very reason for which something is done or created. It is the reason for it to exist. It is the intention, the aim or function of creating something. For example, who doesn't have an eye? Everybody here has an eye. If you did general science, there is a cornea, uh, there is a lens, you have an optic nerve, all combined so that you can do what? See, right? If you have all these beautiful features here and you cannot see, can we say that your eye is successful? Because the purpose of this creation is for you to see, right? So, if we design something and the purpose for which it was designed, it cannot perform that function, you can't call, you can't call it being successful. Are we on the same page? Okay. Even this auditorium that we are in, it was built for a purpose. So that all of us can gather here, have a conference like this, Maybe you have your entertainment here, a lecture can be given here, this could serve as a dining hall. There are a lot of diverse purposes for this room. The designer of the room designed it so. So, suppose we are right here, 
and it is raining, hmm? and all of us get drenched, will you tell me that the building has fulfilled its purposes? I need an answer. Has the building fulfilled its purposes if it cannot protect us from the vagaries of the weather? The only reason why this building exists is that it should be a shelter for us against any adverse weather conditions. So as long as this building does not fulfill that purpose, we cannot say it has been successful, true or false. And this is what brings me to what success is. Society has created an impression, a definition of success that is based on a false precept. Whenever you hear the word success, a mental image of affluence, extreme influence, or fame is what normally comes to mind. But is this the true definition of success? If I should ask you, hmm, among Ghanaian rappers, who is the most successful? Can somebody give me a name? Yeah, Sarkozy. Who else? Huh? Becca Shatawali. Very good. So you see, we have this mental picture of what success should be. That's why a lot of people create a facade. They will, they will go and rent cars, they will wear designer clothing, maybe they even borrowed it to come on your television set and make you feel that that is the epitome of success. Is that what real success is? Now, remember, I defined success as an accomplishment based on purpose, right? So if your purpose is not what you have achieved, we cannot truly say that you are successful. We at Africa and Seto, we believe that every person is born to solve a problem by fulfilling the purpose of the problem. The success of every entity is defined by its purpose. The example I gave you was that this building was built to protect you from the weather and as long as it can do that then the building is successful don't don't ever forget that definition i know a man called ochami asante who is a master drama or a percussion who knows him ochami asante who knows him your generation is not interested in traditional things right if i had asked who knows shatawale all of you know him right Okay, this man tells a very funny story as a child growing up in a Ghanaian village. When he went to school and the teacher asked them, who do you want to be in the future? The usual, I want to be a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, an engineer. And when he said that he wanted to be a drama, do you know what happened? Everybody laughed at him. He wanted to be a drama, and I mean uh, Phantom from or uh, the traditional kind of drums. Everybody laughed at him. He even got a scolding from his teacher. Today, he performs in front of kings and dignitaries all over the world. Hmm? While some of his better endowed classmates live a life of obscurity and non-fulfillment, I am not implying that doing or having a regular job is bad, but does your job ultimately give you satisfaction? And do you serve humanity as you do your job? You see, our executive director tells a very funny story. He employed a certain man who is a cleaner to come into his house and clean the house. The guy brought his equipment, the man was going to work, so he left him. Now the cleaner brought all the vacuuming and other machines into the house. But then the cleaner realized that the house needed painting. Hmm? By the time 
the executive director came back, the house was painted, but the house was not cleaned. Has the man done his job? I'm asking the question. Has the man done his job? Exactly. So can we say this man has been successful? And that's the trust of the topic that I'm trying to give you. Success is defined by purpose. What is your purpose? Have you considered trying to find out the purpose for which your creator created you? If you are the yellow track school prefect, hmm, what is the purpose for which you were made the school prefect for the yellow track? If you are the entertainment prefect and you go and you do the work of the compound overseeing, mm, and your own purpose for which you were put in that particular position is there, have you attained success? Now, to wait, success is based on purpose, and there can never be success without purpose. Find your purpose. What is your purpose in life? If you want to be fulfilled in life, do what gives you joy. Our understanding of success puts an undue emphasis on achieving financial success, career objectives, being famous, influencing others, being a celebrity, stuff like that. Does that bring you joy? If it brings you joy, maybe that's your purpose. But as long as you are unfulfilled in whatever, in whatever position that you have put yourself, I put it to you that you need to rediscover your God-given purpose in life. And you need to make every effort to find that purpose and achieve it, or make an effort to achieve it, if being successful is one of the things that you want to be. As youth leaders, Everybody here is a leader, that's what we believe. You will take the mantle of leadership from those holding them today. And your ability to redeem yourself or deem yourself successful is underpinned by the purpose for which you were born. I will entreat everyone here not to buy into the superficial definitions handed down to all of us about wealth, about fame, about influencing others about just being a leader, but to find your purpose in service to humanity. Do something that will bring improvement, joy, understanding to what God has already created, so that at the end of the day, you yourself find fulfillment and people also find some kind of direction from you. That is what we define as success at Africa set up. Having a purpose to serve your fellow human beings and striving at every point in time to achieve that purpose. Who doesn't understand this? Success is the accomplishment of one's purpose in life. Can you clap for him? Thank you very much. We have in our midst Mr. Samuel Boatin, did I get the name right? Okay, Samuel Boatin from, he's a representative from the National Youth Authority, Koforidua branch. So he's in our midst, let's appreciate him. Okay, I want to appreciate our media persons. We have TV Africa in our midst, we have TV3 here, we have GH1. Let's appreciate them, please. <laughs> and of course, Seto Afrowake is not doing this alone. Without you, we can't do it. We can't make it happen. Let's appreciate Ganas. <laughs> and I also want to appreciate the Seto Afrowake media and every other team member here. Our all shares, everybody, I'm appreciating you. Thank you. So now I want us to have a word from the representative from the National Youth Authority, Koforidia, Mr. Samuel Boate, to give us a word. Thank you. 
Good morning. Um, as she said earlier, my name is Boatin Samoa from National Youth Authority. Um, this is a youth development program, and we were given an invitation to come and honor this uh, program. And it's really, really, really important to invest in the youth today because we normally say the future of Ghana is in the hands of the youth. So you, we, we need to make sure we address ourselves with all the activities that is going on within the country to make sure we secure the future for ourselves. So what I would say is let us pay attention to whatever that is going on here so that tomorrow we can benefit from whatever that is going to be said today. Thank you very much. Okay, so at this point, I want to invite the second speaker. He also says he's a lecturer. So those of you who want to become a lecturer, professors, when we are done, please get to know him. Get closer for some tips. He lectures at the University of Central University. <laughs> Central University. Yeah, Central University, one of the lecturers. He's a professor. He's called Mr. Noble Osebonso. He does not much introduction, so Mr. Noble Osebonso, take it up. Thank you too for coming because without you, we wouldn't be here. So thank you for coming. I think the first speaker did justice to the topic. We are talking our team basically is the principles of success. And as you heard earlier, success is hinged on purpose. So my job here is simply to ask the question, how do I on earth, or how do I discover my purpose? Because if you want to be successful, you must know your purpose. So how do you discover your purpose? How do I discover or how to identify my purpose? There's an initial remarks that I put here. Let's listen. It is important to understand that each individual is born Sorry, each individual on earth is born with a unique life purpose. We are not here by chance. If you want to fulfill, if you want to be fulfilled in life, you must learn to discover your purpose. As a matter of fact, your purpose is what guides your goals, your plans, and aspirations. Therefore, your actions or behaviors, attitudes, gifts must be linked to your purpose. In addition, Discovering your purpose is a critical decision for every individual, especially for young people like you. Your purpose is not something you need to make up. It is already there. So your purpose is already there. Your job is to discover your purpose so you will fulfill your purpose. So tell somebody, my purpose is already there. I only need to discover it. I only need to discover it. Alright, it's not something that you make up. It is already there. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines success as something set up as an object or end to be obtained. That is an intention or resolution. Then the Collins English Dictionary also says that it is the reason for which something is made or done. The Longman Dictionary of Contemporary English says that purpose, the purpose of something is what is intended to achieve, what it is intended to achieve. And then the Macmillan Dictionary says that purpose, the aim that someone wants to achieve or something is intended to achieve. So the aim that someone wants to achieve or the aim something is intended to achieve. So for example, if you ask somebody who designs a car, what is the intended purpose of the car? Is it to fly in the air? Hello? <laughs> is the car to fly in the air? I think it's only James Bond who can make cars fly in the air. <laughs> but the purpose of the car is not to fly in the air. So it means that if you want to use the car like you are using an aeroplane, 
It means that you are distorting your purpose. And sometimes that's what people do. It's either because they don't know, they haven't identified yet, and they want to do something because they feel other people are doing it, or for some reason, they are just coveting other people's purpose. Somebody would then ask, why is it important for me to discover my purpose? Why should I not just live through life and do what I please? It is important to discover your purpose because it is what is keeping you on earth. You are here because of the purpose. You see that when you plant a tree and the tree serves its purpose, at a point the tree dies, right? There is no fruit. It dies out. It means that it has outlived its purpose. So there is no use for it to live. The same way you are on, you are on earth, you are not dead yet because you have a purpose. So it is important for you to discover that purpose. And I like the way our executive director, Nano Sebunsu, the way he demonstrates this. He says that it's like he uses a puzzle. I'm sure we all know a puzzle. P-U-Z-Z-L-E. So let's say you draw Ghana map using a puzzle. You are supposed to fix each puzzle to specific places or specific locations, right? So what happens if you say you fix Greater Accra region, you go and fix it in Upper West. Will that fit? Hello? Will that fit? It will not fit because that is not the purpose. So everybody has a place in this puzzle of life. So life is like a puzzle and everybody has a place. That is why it is important for you to discover your place, your purpose, so that you will fit in the exact location. How do I identify my purpose? That's sometimes it's a headache for a lot of people. Why, why, how do I do that? How would I know that this is what I'm called to do? And before I say that, let me say that please, don't do, don't desire to do things that will bring you money. I repeat, don't desire to do things that will bring you money. I'm not saying don't work for money or don't do things for money. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying that don't live all your life doing things that will bring you money. What you have to do is to do things that bring you satisfaction. Things that are in line with your purpose. And that's how come sometimes, you know, people have a shipwreck of their lives. You find that somebody is practicing doctor, so-called big person, person commits suicide, you don't understand. And people are doing all sorts of things. Sometimes it is because they are doing the wrong thing that they are not called. So number one, know that God is the source of your purpose. God is the source of your purpose. Just, just as a designer of a car, a farm, anything, any inventor designs it for a specific purpose. Know that God is the one who is the source of your purpose because he's the one who created you. And he did that through your parents. Number two, understand that some people may easily identify their purpose while others will have a challenge. Sometimes some others have challenges in identifying their purpose. Other people easily identify their purpose right from childhood. They walk through it. My, my, my elder brother, the one I come after, two after, two after him, and the second after him. With his children, one said, I want to be a lawyer, one, one female and two males. Another said, I want to be a, a doctor or a veterinary. And the other said, I've forgotten what the other said, but the other is now an architect, the third one is in law school. The first one, you know, he had the one who said he wants to go into, he wants to be a doctor, but not a, 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 a human doctor. He wants to be an animal doctor. He had admission to read medicine that would take him to become a medical doctor. Do you know he went to change it? He said he didn't like it. And it was unthinkable. So he went to see the, I think, one of the people in charge, one of the professor. 
And the guy was astonished. Things that people are craving to do, you have it and you say you don't like it. You want to change. Because he said that that is not what he wants to do. So such a person, he knows exactly what he wants to do. Other people say, oh, let me take it. Oh, this is the same line. But he said, no. So eventually they changed it for him. He's now finished. He is now a veterinary doctor. And according to the second with his brother, while they were growing up, any time he sees his, they are walking around and they see animals, maybe dogs who are not well taken care of, he's upset and he's like, oh, what is happening to, why are they treating this dog like this? Why is this dog not well kept and so on and so forth? So you see, right from there, he knew exactly what he wanted to be. So, some may have it easy. Other people may also have difficulty. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, there's a way for you to identify. That's why we are here, your purpose. Number three, some of the ways uh, that explore the things that come to you naturally. Sometimes you want to do things that don't come naturally. I always tell people, I don't have a problem. I, I don't have a problem teaching. You know, I don't wake up and say, yeah, today what am I going to teach in the lecture hall? Even if I'm not prepared, I don't have a problem teaching. I may have problems with other things, but it comes naturally. I have not been to training college, but I teach. Somebody will say, oh, you don't teach well. Well, that's up to you. I know I teach well. <laughs> so I'm saying that to say that explore the things that come to you easily. There are some things that you, you don't struggle to do. You do them easily. You don't hustle to do them. They come naturally. These are the things you must explore to do because sometimes some of these things may signal your purpose. Sometimes they may signal your purpose. So the things you love to do easily, the things that drive you, and sometimes what you call a hobby, some of the things you do like for hobby, those are the things that you are called to do sometimes. So two questions here. What do I love to do? Ask yourself that question. Can I take some responses? What do you love to do? I love to do is play instrument. Okay, you don't hustle to do that. All right. What do you what do you do naturally, or what do you love to do? Where's Train the, mic? the microphone, please. You naturally play what? The braid. Our, our braid, okay, so it comes naturally. Good. Can I take some response from here? What do you love to do? Singing, okay, you love to sing, it comes naturally, all right. The last one. You love to dance. So when we finish, you will do some dancing for us to see. <laughs> but, but somebody will say, I love to sing, I love to read, I love to write, I love to play, I love to dance, and so on and so forth. So if you love to dance, and that's what you are good at, explore that. Don't, don't desire to, to sing if you don't know how to sing. Because it doesn't come naturally. So do the things that come naturally and explore them. If you, you desire to draw or if you love to draw, do them. If you like to calculate, if you like to read, and this is sometimes the problems I have with when we want to you know, assign courses, want to direct people into courses. And we look at people's faces and we just drive them into courses. Please, if you are a parent here, don't force your children to do anything against their will. With all humility. You can guide them, but don't say, oh, I want to be an accountant. I couldn't be, so you be an accountant. Or I want a lawyer in this house, so you become a lawyer. It's not proper. Let the children do the things that they love to do. And they, they desire to do. So things that come easily. Work but not struggles and suffering is required for one to live on purpose. For you to be able to live on purpose, you must not do things that you struggle to do. Do things that you easily do. That comes naturally. Number four, understand that gifts are aligned or embedded in purpose. Your gifts, 
the gifts that God has given you or your talents, if you like, they are embedded in purpose. So God gave you the ability to sing, not just for fun, not to just entertain, but it's for a purpose. It's in line with your purpose. So identifying your gifts or abilities can be, can be a guide to your purpose. So if you want to know your purpose, begin to identify your abilities and your gifts. What are the things that I do easily, that I don't struggle to do? That is what you have to strive to discover. Number five, find out what you are willing to sacrifice for. What are you willing to sacrifice for? Sacrifice your time, sacrifice everything for. So begin to look into yourself. Do some introspection and be asking yourself questions. What am I willing to sacrifice for? As for this thing, as for rehearsal, if I have not eaten by rehearsal, I can stay all night rehearsing. I can sacrifice my food for that. Or if it is drawing, I can draw all night. I can sacrifice something for that. So begin to identify the things you can sacrifice for, something for, and that will be an indication of what your purpose is. Number six, and I think the last but one, listen to what other people appreciate about you. You know, sometimes we see people say, oh, you are good at that, you do this well. And when somebody is like, those who play instruments, somebody is playing and you are all like, ah, you be saying in your head, ah, What's your name? Henry. Oh, like if Henry was here, we would have played it better. Or if so and so was here, we would have played it better. We know him that way. And people appreciate that about you. So we begin to listen to what other people, I'm not talking about flattery. You know, sometimes we flatter people when we know they can't do it, we still flatter them. That's not what I'm talking about. But genuinely, the things that people appreciate about you, begin to think about those things. And then there's number seven, there are other things, but number seven, follow your inner guidance or your heart. Follow your heart. Don't follow money. Tell somebody, don't follow money. Don't follow, money. Follow, your follow your heart. If you follow your heart, the money will come. The money will come. So don't follow money. Follow your heart. So... These are some of the few things that you can, that can help you to be able to identify your purpose. Number one, let me run through them quickly. Know that God is the source of your purpose. Number two, understand that some people may easily identify that their purpose, while others may have a challenge, so don't be frustrated when you are having difficult. Number three, explore the things that come to you naturally. Number four, understand that gifts are aligned or embedded in purpose. So identifying your gifts can be a guide to your purpose. Number five, find out what you are willing to sacrifice for. Number six, listen to what other people appreciate about you. And number seven, follow your inner guidance and your heart. Before I take my seat, let me just tell you things to avoid. In trying to discover your purpose, there are some things you must avoid. Number one, don't covet other people's abilities or giftings. Don't covet, oh, I want, I want this person's home. I don't like my singing. I want this person's dancing. I don't like my, my what? My, your, your, no, I had something. Can you repeat? I don't like my heart. I'm too short. Who said you are too short? God made you short with purpose. For well, I want this person's height. He's tall. Or she's tall. But I want that height. God gave the person that height for purpose. So don't covet other people's abilities. It is good to admire. You can admire people's abilities. That's fine. But don't covet your abilities. What God has given to you, identify and use it. Because that is, God knows why he gave you that. God knows why he gave you a broad nose and not a pointed nose. Don't use all your energy to acquire a gift. One that does not come naturally. The one that don't come naturally. Don't waste your time and spending all your energies trying to polish that one. Instead, 
rechannel your energies into the ones that come naturally. So somebody will say, don't major in the minor and minor in the major. You must major in the major and minor in the minor. Know your strengths and direct your abilities in that direction. Don't waste your energies and spend all your time trying to polish up something that you cannot or that doesn't come easily. Have you seen lions crossing rivers or swimming across rivers? How many have seen lions crossing or swimming across rivers or animals apart from lions? You've not seen anything. You've seen lions, they, cross, they do cross rivers. But as much as they, cross, they can cross rivers, they cannot do it better than a duck or better than a fish. Can they? So the lion will not waste his energy in trying to be like the duck. No, because they know they are not capable. They can do that a little, but they are not as smart as ducks or as smart as fishes. And the last one, which is the, the most key, and which unfortunately some people do, don't be a corporate cat. <laughs> and I find this so amazing. Sometimes, especially when you please, don't, don't be copying people. Shatawali raps like this, so I want to rap like that. Sakodi raps like this, I want to rap like that. Please don't be a copycat. cat. Be original because you are unique. No copycat can do better than the original. Have you seen a counter counterfeit money which is better than the original? Never. So if you are not original and you are a copycat, you are a counterfeit, you can never be equal to the original. So don't be a copycat, be original. So you don't distort the unique purpose of God for you. So you don't distort, distort the purpose. Just like I told you about the puzzle. If you move greater Accra region and you want to go and put the size of that puzzle in less in western region, it's a distortion, it won't fit. So don't distort, don't be a copycat. So tell your friend, don't be a copycat. Be original. So be you. Be you. All right. So my final comments. Finally, you must discover and develop your gifts or abilities. So discover based on the few pointers I have given. Try and find where you fit. Discover your and develop your gifts and abilities to enable you become fit for purpose. To enable you become fit for purpose as originally intended by your creator. Remember that nobody can take your place in this assignment. Nobody can take your place. If you understand it that way, it will help you a lot. Nobody can take your place in this assignment. You are unique and you have a unique purpose. Thank you and God bless you. Wow, oh, let's do better. Okay, we'll be going for a break shortly. We'll do the Q&A, question and answer time. All your questions and answers. Calf is here. Mr. Kojue from Paul will be here to do that. But I want to quickly acknowledge the following. I want to acknowledge Mrs. Joyce a Japan. We have Imac FM here, is it right? And we have Kingdom FM also here. So the media partners, we have GH1, we have TV Africa, we have TV3, we have Imac FM, Kingdom FM, and our own media, Seto Afrique Media. Seto Afrik. Oh, Mama Vibe Kakram Brim. Eh? Seto. Seto. Now we are going to change it. You say service to humanity. So you say service. You say to and then humanity. So Seto. Service to humanity. So we start from here today. Seto. 
Let's give it up. We are almost at the end of the program. And I want to put our organization's number out there. You can follow us, Seto Afriwik, on Facebook. You go to YouTube, you get Seto Afriwik or AS Media. You can have our number, it is 0551. 0551. Two nine seven four double six zero five five one two nine seven four six six. I'm giving out the number because I know most of you, you are now warming up and you want to ask questions. So, bar it again zero five five one two nine seven four six six. Follow us on Seto Africa Facebook. We are on Instagram, we are on YouTube. So when you type the name, it will pop up. You can also visit our website, www.afriwake.com. Hello. Hi. Can we please put our hands together for ourselves? I think it's been lovely and we've all enjoyed ourselves. First and foremost, as a Christian, Let's give thanks to God I mean, uh, for taking us through the entire program very successfully. I just have a feeling that Seto Africa will come back to Ghana. Yes. I, don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling that this will happen again. Let's keep a big thank you to the administration, the headmaster and the entire administration of Ghana Senior High School. Let's put our together for the closing very But we very, very, very so helpful. I went, initially when we brought the letter to the headmaster, he wasn't well. I remember meeting him at home on a hot Sunday afternoon. And he just looked at me, oh, was there before coming? And we had preliminary discussions. Then subsequently, there were discussions, and yesterday there was a final meeting with the administration, and they've been so open, I and mean, they've, they've been wonderful. So thank you, administration, and the entire Of course, we also want to say a big thank you to you students. Without you, this was not going to be possible. A, a, a group of young, prospective leaders who are prefects and servants for making yourself available. It's been very interactive, and we are damn sure we'll have this session again. So thank you all for being here. If you can clap for yourself. And once again, because of publicity and media coverage, we want to say a big thank you to our media partners. The TV stations are TV3 and TV Africa. We also have the Mark FM, Joy News here, Kingdom FM, and GH1 Television. And so we want to say a big thank you to them for their media coverage. And hopefully you'll be seeing this program on our screens and our, on our frequency dial. So let's look out for it. Uh, so thank you, Media Houses, for your presence. Again, can we clap for them? Then to other members of the team, all the way from Kumase and Accra, the operations manager, the other director, prof, and our media man. And of course, uh, not forgetting the executive director way back in the state. He has a spirit behind the group. So let's thank the entire team for such a wonderful presentation. Then, of course, a representative of government, they are always there, the National Union of Poets. So uh, today we are not going to call it, we are just, just talking about the youth. So thank you for representing the Youth Authority in that way. Okay. So, by wrapping up, I've had discussions with the assistant academic and the senior house mistress, and they tell us that we have data of you guys, so we can form a club or a chapter of Seto Africa on campus. So let's, let's put out some that. So, what you should be expecting is that, me, this is my school. 
I'm in town. So we will have lots of relations. And we will meet them with preliminary meetings. And we'll talk about leadership and other stuff, career guidance. I mean, I'm sure at this stage, we want people to talk to you. And that's why we are available as an NGO. We will come. And so when we close, if you have anything to share with us, at least we've got about 20 minutes or so. We can have interactions after the program. So once again, thank you to everybody. And may the good Lord bless us all. Thank you.